Hello. Today we're going to begin talking about a business strategy with specific emphasis on the resource-based view, which is also referred to as RBV. In this lesson, we're going to look again at the question of what leads to differential firm performance? Why does one firm outperform its competitors? What makes your company more successful than mine? Although there are a number of schools of thought regarding differential firm performance, there are two that I think are most relevant for supply chain thought. There's the resource-based view and the positioning approach. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the resource-based view. RBV was developed by a number of scholars like Barney, Petteraff, and Werner Felt. Over time, it has continued to evolve and adapt to the ever-changing corporate landscape. Originally, RBV was based on a few core concepts. RBV has an internal firm focus and advocates that competitive advantage is derived from exploiting internal firm resources and capabilities rather than external factors. Resource-based logic suggests that firms rely on both tangible and intangible resources that are assumed to be heterogeneous and immobile. Firm resources must also have certain attributes in order to help provide competitive advantage. Those attributes are valuable, rare, inimitable, and non-substitutable. Let's look at each aspect of the RBV conceptual model in a little more detail. Resource-based logic suggests that firms rely on both tangible and intangible resources that are assumed to be heterogeneous and immobile. Firm resources must also have certain attributes in order to help provide a competitive advantage. Those attributes are valuable, rare, inimitable, and non-substitutable. Let's look at each aspect of the RBV conceptual model in a little more detail. Resources can be tangible or intangible. Although we all probably have an intuitive sense of what that means, let's more specifically define these terms, give some examples, and talk about why they are each important. Tangible resources refer to physical things that we can see and touch, like land, buildings, equipment, and capital. In a supply chain context, tangible resources might include a network of distribution centers or a fleet of trucks. These types of resources can provide an advantage, but that advantage is often short-term because tangible resources can often be purchased in an open market. On the other hand, intangible resources have no physical presence. We cannot see or touch intangible resources. These are things like skills, capabilities, know-how, or process expertise. Intangible resources take time to develop and they cannot be easily purchased on the open market. Let me contrast tangible and intangible resources with a supply chain example. Any firm can purchase distribution centers or a fleet of trucks. All it takes is cash to buy those tangible resources. However, the know-how to leverage distribution and transportation capabilities in the most efficient and effective manner is an intangible resource that takes time to develop. That type of intellectual expertise is the main source of competitive advantage. The resource-based view is also based on two key assumptions. They are heterogeneity and immobility. The assumption that resources are heterogeneous means that resources differ from company to company and that firms in the exact same industry with the exact same external forces can still have different internal resources that lead to differential firm performance. For example, Apple and Samsung both compete in the tablet and smartphone markets, and they share the same industry structure. However, the companies have heterogeneous internal resources that can explain their performance differentials. The assumption that resources are immobile simply means that resources cannot easily move from one company to another in the short term. Immobility also means that competitors cannot quickly replicate their rivals, resources, or their strategies. For example, many companies would like to have Apple's innovation capabilities, but that strategic resource takes a lot of time and money to develop, and it cannot be quickly duplicated. It is immobile. According to RBV, resources must also have very specific characteristics in order to create a competitive advantage. The acronym VRIM helps me remember that resources must be valuable, rare, inimitable, and non-substitutable. 
Quite simply, resources are valuable if they help a company reduce costs, increase differentiation, or combine cost and differentiation characteristics in a way that creates value for customers. In a supply chain context, any strategic resources that help provide time, place, form, or possession utility in a better, cheaper, or faster way are valuable. Resources also need to be rare. And by that, I mean resources cannot be widely available to competitors. Because if everyone has a resource, then it is impossible for it to drive differential firm performance and competitive advantage. In RBV language, resources must be inimitable. That is, they must be difficult or costly to imitate. So competitors cannot easily copy and implement your strategic approach. Typically, supply chain processes with a lot of different steps across functional and organizational boundaries are some of the most difficult, intangible resources to imitate because every step in the process is unknown to competitors or it's unclear which steps are most important. Either way, supply chain know-how is tough to imitate. Finally, in addition to being valuable, rare, and inimitable, resources also need to be non-substitutable. That means they cannot be replaced by other readily available resources, or at a minimum, it must be costly for a rival to find a substitutable resource. The reason that resources need to be valuable, rare, inimitable, and non-substitutable is so that they can be used towards competitive advantage. Competitive advantage occurs when companies implement a value-creating strategy that competitors are not using. This can provide superior performance relative to other competitors in the exact same industry. That is the essence of competitive advantage and the goal of RBV logic. But what does this high-level strategic management concept have to do with supply chain management? That's a fair question to ask. Quite simply, in my opinion, Supply chain management is the ultimate source of competitive advantage because it fits so well within the RBV framework. If you think about it, structurally, supply chains have existed for centuries. We have always sourced raw materials, operationally transformed them into finished goods, and logistically moved them to where they were needed when they were needed. We've always depended on getting the right products to the right place at the right time. However, it has just been over the past few decades that we began to think about supply chain management in an integrated and holistic manner. We are still discovering all the benefits of communicating, collaborating, and coordinating about basic business processes across functional corporate and national boundaries. This intricate and nuanced know-how is definitely an intangible resource that is valuable, it is rare, it is inimitable, and it is non-substitutable. Supply chain management expertise is not prevalent, and you cannot just move it from one company to another. And yet, if you do eventually crack the code and manage supply chains well, companies can provide their customers with a much more valuable bundle of cost, service, and timeliness attributes. The capability to efficiently and effectively manage supply chains is a strategic resource that drives differential firm performance. So what leads to differential firm performance? It's the capability to efficiently and effectively manage supply chains as a strategic resource that drives the differences we see in the market.